Hello, everyone. It's Chelsea from Pip Rock Tio Studio. And today I'm participating in a hop with some friends from YouTube about what you're passionate about right now. And I think that collage is probably my number one passion and has been for a long time. But what I'm really into right now is abstracted collage. And I've really loved using just random pieces of paper from my desk not going and searching for anything, but just these bins on my desk that have diff different stuff and pulling stuff out of there and getting inspired by it and making collages. I spoke recently in one of my um, vlogs at the beginning of the month about how I really just wanted to do what I wanted to do. I did not want to do what other people expected of me. I did not want to have deadlines and responsibilities and all these things. I just wanted to just do some of the stuff that I like to do. And so I was really excited to join this hop because I can do whatever the heck I want and say it's my passion. And right now I would literally sit and do this type of collage all day long without any problem. I would enjoy it. I would have fun and I would not have to think about anything other than just making things that I think are pretty. And I wish that I could do that. I really do. I would. I wish that I was a famous artist and I could sell these things for hundreds of dollars and that I had an Etsy shop and I could just sit around and do abstracted collage all day long and make money and you know, have a way to distribute it. I, I wish that that was my life, but it's not. This is my life. I'm a YouTuber. I teach people how to do mixed media art and I love doing that as well. I'm just, a, you know, a little bit overwhelmed with my life right now. So doing this piece was so fun. <clears throat> I decided to start out my collage. You know, you don't always have to cover every inch of your substrate with paper collage. You don't have to. You can use paint, you can use ink, you can start something without starting to glue things to it right away. And I was really inspired by this one piece, the, that very first one on the bottom there that has some uh, phthalo blue and some copper and some some sort of an orange or red on it. I don't know. It's it's actually a, a edge piece from gel printing. You know I love gel printing and it's a great way to make collage paper but I was trimming up something. Sometimes I trim them down so that I can take photos of them and that was the edge. That was the crusty bits from the edge of the plate. Not intentional at all. Just something that came from picking up a la some layers of paint that were just on the plate. And I saw it on my cutting table and I said you know that's so pretty. And I decided to make my entire collage based on that. I often will be inspired by a color combination that's just random. Or maybe a, something like a little postage stamp. Or just something that I see in my hoarding <laughs> that just at that particular moment in time inspires me. So I picked my colors based on that little piece of paper that's literally how I picked my colors and I decided to use distress inks because I had seen uh, Mary Beth Shaw using them uh, yesterday in her live and I thought you know I should get those those out <laughs> I haven't even used them for so long and so I I did a combination of distress inks in four colors um, links below the video of what colors I used and where you can find them, as well as some unbleached titanium and some Naples yellow acrylic paint to kind of blend things together. Now I'm keeping in mind that Distress Ink is not permanent and so I do need to seal it. So before I started my collage process, which is what I'm working on right now, I sealed all of that with a brayer and some clear gesso. I just went all over it so that all those layers of ink that I went and put on there intentionally won't move around when I start to do the collage part because I'm going to glue stuff and it's, you know, I'm going to be using a brush and that could really disturb the ink. So that's why I put that clear gesso on there. So then I laid out 
my abstract collage and I took a photo of it and I showed that photo a, a couple seconds ago <clears throat> so that I would remember what I did because so many times you lay out this beautiful thing and then you dump all the paper off and get ready to glue it down and then you can't remember what the heck it even was and so <laughs> It's nice to take a photo, especially if you have a smartphone. It's super easy. The phone's right there anyway in case somebody needs you. So, uh, yeah, just snap a little photo. And then you can look back and say, oh, yeah, that's how I did it. I liked that. I need to do that again. So because I had things over and under and around and in between things, I, I need to refer back to that photo occasionally to get all this stuff glued down correctly. Now, in the end... In the final piece, you can hardly see that original piece of paper that inspired me, but that does not matter. That is my, you know, it was my inspiration. It was my color choice, my palette. And because just because it disappears mostly in the end, that just doesn't really even matter. It was a cool piece of paper, but it's not the end all be all. I wanted some different textural in, things on this one because... Um, I'm using a canvas, and by the way, this is a six by six, six stretched pre gessoed canvas. In case anybody's wondering, um, so when I'm scratching and scraping the distress ink pads over the canvas, it makes a texture, which you can see in the close ups at the end. So I wanted other textural pieces, and I I had this little piece of some sort of a craft colored embossed paper from somewhere packaging probably um, and I thought it had an interesting texture I had some of this these leftover scraps of hemp that are dyed black I thought they would make an, in, an interesting texture and um, there's also some wrinkles and some crinkles and some different bits uh, in the papers as well that I didn't I didn't spend a whole lot of time scraping it and pressing it and making sure that it, there was no wrinkles because I thought a little bit of texture would be nice. So I'm thinking about putting more hemp on there and I'm like, no, that's too much. I don't want it. So I decided I needed something else over there and I had this piece of some somehow stained deli paper that, that I then had used uh, to... Okay, when you're gel printing, you the way that I prefer it, I like to put a dark color down, then I like to put a stencil over the top, and then I like to pull the color out from the stencil so that I can add other colors and then end up with like interesting colors inside of a black frame. This is the scrap piece that was from pulling the paint out. That's all it is. But it makes a big impact on this piece because it has so much interesting pattern Plus, it had a little bit of that orangey, yellowy uh, stain on it from something. It was a scrap piece, you know. I, I, don't, I don't throw anything away. It all comes back in the end and gets used. <laughs> some people say that's hoarding. I say it's smart because some little piece of something that I found on the ground or in one of my scrap bins is going to inspire me. And even as I was putting away the the papers and thinking I was done I found this blue one with kind of some orangey marks on it and I know that that orange mark is from a wheel stamp across the plate because I remember doing that and there's a little heart right there on that blue piece you may not see it right away but this might be abstracted but it still has symbol and it still expresses something, even if it's completely abstract. Sometimes people look at abstract art and they're like, I don't know what that means. I don't understand it. I don't like it because it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have, it doesn't, it doesn't scream, look at me. I'm a picture of a person. That's what I like about it. You can interpret this in any way that you want. You can look at it and it can make you feel a way that I didn't even intend because there's, there's a lot less intention and a lot more action in it. There's movement. There's color. There's, there's things about it that express me and my personality and what I like 
without it screaming in your face. This is an illustration of a thing and it looks exactly like that. This is much more rewarding to me than doing illustrating. Although I do love to illustrate and you guys know that because you watched me do it. <laughs> so to finish this up, I added some India ink using some uh, Fabricastel pit pins and then uh, blending that out with the water brush because you have a few seconds. And of course, this is all pretty sealed in there because I've used Liquitex matte medium to stick everything down and I usually go over the top. Plus I have that clear gesso layer in there. So it's easy to blend this color by just putting a little bit on with my, with my pen and then blending it out with a brush, a um, little bit of water. It, it makes such an impact in my opinion to collage when you do this. I, I think it's something that should be done. I think it integrates everything together and makes it more interesting. I also added a little bit of copper paint through another stencil um, over the top just to make like some, just to bring that copper color back because the original inspiration piece of paper had copper on it and I wanted it to come back because I love copper. <laughs> and then at the end I did uh, seal this whole thing with a coat of gloss varnish, which is not something I normally do. I usually do a satin or a matte, but I just felt it needed the gloss because of the metallic paint and little, you know, areas where there was some metallics. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that you understand that this is, this is a passionate piece for me and that's why I chose it for this hop. Make sure that you go down below the video and you click each link in order Go to the next person's video, watch it. Under their video will be the next link. And when you get come back to me, you will have completed the entire hop. I'm sure there's some great stuff out there. I will be hopping it later. Make sure that you give those people some love and subscribe to their channels and uh, leave them comments. Tell them they're doing a good job. That's what uh, video hopping is all about. And yeah. I'm sure that they're doing what they're passionate about and I'm sure it's interesting. So here's where I'm just adding some little dots of color using a small stencil from Stencil Girl. And it's copper. I add a little bit more copper using just my finger. Um, just a reminder, make sure that you put lotion on your hands before you start getting your fingers into everything because some things are toxic and they can escape through your skin. So that is it for me for this this little six by six abstract collage. I hope you like it. Um, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments or questions below. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bell so you know when there's a fresh new video out. And of course, you can share this on Pinterest or on Facebook if you really think it's great. You can share it with your friends who like abstract art. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <music>